eight skills from easy to impossible and how to do them. The Elden Ring community is infamous for taking things to the next level and I wanted to get a taste of the glory. We'll start quite simple, but by the end we'll be attempting real game breaking mechanics that I'll be surprised if I can do. When picking the skills to learn, I chose a good mix of speedrunning techniques and player versus player techniques. Generally, without exception, you'll see players doing the most complicated moves in these two areas. The first one is elevator skips. This is a common speedrunning technique. Simply put, you're aiming to suicide drop down the shaft and use your corpse to press the button. This used to be possible for most elevators, but I have to say FromSoft have been really active when it comes to their patching lately. It's kind of unprecedented. I decided to learn this technique with the elevator next to the abandoned coffin grace in the Atlas Plateau region. This one is interesting because it's in the overworld, so you can use your horse to make the jump. Most of my initial fails were simply due to positioning. For some reason, I naturally was aiming for a diagonal impact in the left corner of the shaft. The problem there was my upper body was not landing close enough to the button in the center. Some of them looked really close, really, really close, at least to my eyes, but clearly my positioning was off. Here's some of my successful attempts. A much more central positioning is best since it puts you closest to the button when you fall off the horse. All told, this took me around 10 minutes to perfect. Definitely an easy one to tick off, but be warned, a lot of these elevators are getting patched with every update. A lot of them, the kill plane has been extended, so it kills you a lot sooner. Your corpse will never even reach the ground. The second skill is named wave dashing. It's a movement tech where you repeatedly crouch and uncrouch while sprinting, which keeps your character very fluid and unpredictable. And it also gives you a small dash, small boost of speed, which allows you to keep up with your opponents in many cases. Normally, if you crouch and sprint, you perform a running attack. But if you crouch and then stand up, you perform the crouch attack, which in most cases is a superior move, famously with colossal swords and dual great spears. You can see the greatsword crouch attack is the infamous forward thrusting poke. It comes out as fast as the light attack from a katana, so it's quite hard to predict. Another bonus to performing this move is the stamina regeneration. When in combat, you'll regain your stamina by performing this wave dash movement, which is obviously a massive benefit. This is a skill that is easy to perform, but hard to master. I ended up spamming the crouch button way too much instead of being mindful of my timing and rhythm. You see, when I come out from the crouch, I should wait almost a full second before crouching and uncrouching again. But that said, I'm happy with this technique. I think it's a good one. We haven't had crouching since Sekiro, so this felt like a fresh new skill in many ways. When I first started trying to perform the reverse backstep, I could tell I was doing something wrong. When I looked at how the top players did it, they just do it instantly. Their character just snaps around with no delay. When I did it, I was fully turning my body around before backstepping, which is just not right. So this incorrect method I was trying, often I would spin around and try to backstep, but it turned into a backwards roll instead because there's not enough time for the inputs. It, yeah, anyway, after all this, I had my epiphany, when I realized you have to hit the dodge button slightly earlier than the direction stick. Backstep first and then almost straight away, but not simultaneously, it's very tight timing, then you pull back. You would think it would be the other way around. It's just so counterintuitive. You do have to be unlocked though, so at least I got that right. You can pull out this move directly after an attack while in the recovery. In some ways, this makes it even easier to cue the input. This is a very powerful move since backstep attacks have different movesets to regular running attacks, so you can catch people off guard, mix up your attacks, which obviously is crucial in PvP, and it just looks cool. It took around 15 minutes or so of practice to chain four or five successful reverse steps in a row, and I'm confident that now I could use it in PvP if I wanted to. So first things first, Quick Step is an Ash of War skill, so you need to infuse it onto a weapon. I chose the Rapier because it has a good backstep attack moveset to follow up with. Quick stepping forwards and then attacking will do the normal dodge attack or roll attack, you know. Quick stepping backwards then attacking will do the backstep attack, which is huge because that involves your character running towards at your opponent. So you basically get extra distance and it's just great for spacing. 
So if you do the reverse quick step, your character will execute the back step attack while moving forwards, which is a lovely movement I've been wanting to add to my repertoire for a while now. At the beginning of my practice, I kept trying to reverse roll with old muscle memory coming back from Dark Souls 1, which involves unlocking, pulling back and using the roll button. In this case though, you're using a weapon art, which is the L2 button, and you don't use the roll button at all. After I performed this once, I knew I had it. I found this easier and more repeatable than the normal reverse quick step for some reason, perhaps because of my past history with reverse rolls in the Souls games as I mentioned. To sum up these two skills together, both the reverse back step and quick step took me around 15 minutes each to pull off comfortably, so that's why they've both been in the easy category, but that's all about to change as we move on to the next skill. Bumping up the difficulty a bit, we come to a more advanced speedrunning technique involving an elevator skip with the ruptured tier. At the south of the map you'll find the Tower of Return. It's home to a secret transporter trap which takes you to the divine bridge of the royal capital in Lendell. Usually you find this in the early game and it would be a minor preview of the late game area. You can't normally progress from this side unless you perform this naughty elevator skip. Obviously the elevator is too high up to survive the fall and it requires pulling a lever to activate, so no dying onto a button this time. Instead the goal is to stand in the centre of these two pillars above the elevator, stand as far off as you can without falling off, which is harder than it looks. Then the tricky part is you need to drink your flask of wondrous physic with the ruptured crystal tier mix. The timing is important and you need to have your character stick and face as close to the two pillars as possible. When falling, you perform the heavy attack around the middle area of the lowest row of statues. If you hit too soon, the flask explodes early and you die. Among my embarrassing attempts, we have this, positioned too carelessly and just <laughs> fell straight off without drinking. There were many, many times where I attacked too soon, which meant I exploded early. I think this is probably the biggest challenge I had. And then probably the most embarrassing one was pivoting too tightly after drinking the flask so I didn't even extend far enough to fall off and I just sort of stood up there and exploded like an idiot. But eventually this took me around 30 to 40 minutes to achieve. I chose Dual Bandit's Curve Swords for my attempts. The Dual Power Stance has the slower recovery animation, making it ideal for the situation. The full explanation for this one is we want the game to reset our previous registered height from before the fall when the ruptured flask explodes and while we're in the middle of the hitting animation. So it's just a height reset, the game doesn't realise we've fallen anywhere. This was more fun to learn than it might look, I will say that. And you get to explode, everyone likes explosions. Patch 1.05 made menu swapping much harder, and that's because they added this little thing here, an increased menu delay. The reason they did this was actually to fix another glitch, unrelated, called the chainsaw glitch, but we won't get into that. For right now, it just means, unfortunately for me, this skill will be even harder to learn than ever before. Initially I had the idea, which was terrible in hindsight, of practicing on the Great Jar Knights. My idea was you could reproduce a PvP dual atmosphere, but in reality it's just too punishing an environment for learning. So I went back to the starting area and tried out swapping on a Godric Soldier. The technique itself is straightforward, just an unfamiliar movement pattern, but you want to of course parry an enemy, open the menu, select your right hand weapon, change and equip a new weapon, then close the menu and do all that before reposting. Ideally, you're swapping to a weapon that's better suited for reposts, like the Misery Chord. At the start, I felt like my fingers were just a bit slow, so I kept ending up in the wrong place, the wrong menu, changing the item ordering, just all over the place, very chaotic. I mentioned that this technique became a lot harder after patch 1.05, well that's because the workaround for the forced menu delay is you have to move forward on the movement stick while performing the swap but it did mean I kept accidentally pushing up in the menu, which took me to the quick item slots instead of the main weapon slot. However, I did end up managing to make some decent swaps. I found it much easier to swap down directionally. If I was to progress with the skill, I would actually look up and copy an inventory preset designed for weapon swapping, or at least organize my inventory better so that the repost weapon is directly underneath the weapon I'm using.
Move swapping is a glitch that has existed in the Souls games since forever. Unfortunately, it's kind of an umbrella term. There's a lot of different types of move swaps, I would say, and unfortunately some players do abuse this glitch, which is a shame. But all I'm doing with it is the move swap that allows you to run on air. It's like you can temporarily fight against gravity, but only a little bit. I'm sure you've guessed this is a speedrunning technique, very useful for sequence breaking and skipping areas early. You need to be able to swap the left hand Uchigitana to the Devourer's Scepter. If you pull it off correctly, you'll fuse together the Devourer's Scepter animation with the Hand of Melania Ash of War. So first things first, I reorganised my inventory by putting stuff I didn't need into the chest so that I had the weapons I was using close together. Then my initial mistake was mixing up which weapon you're supposed to two-hand. Elden Ring has a more unique two-handing system. If we take a PlayStation controller, you can hold triangle and press R1 or L1 to two-hand your right or left weapon, respectively. I was putting the right main hand weapon in two hands when I should have been two-handing the left offhand weapon, which is the Uchigitano in this case. Once I had that down, it was actually not too bad. What I did was a light attack R1, then a quick L2 press to sheath the katana, open the menu, go to your left hand weapon, the Uchi Kitana, and swap to the Devourer Scepter. Like with all the rest, the timing and sequence is crucial, but this one actually didn't take me as long as some of the other skills, weirdly, despite it being arguably more complex in theory. Once I pulled off the technique on solid ground, I started trying it out in midair. And those attempts were also successful, Eventually I tried it on railing above certain death and I certainly died. I then tried it on a section with more space but panicked and jumped off the edge. It's funny how raising the stakes makes things harder in your mind. The third attempt over a lethal drop was successful until I realised my aim was off and I didn't actually turn the corner. But still, I had now proven I could do it and so I did. Now we arrive at the most challenging, the impossible zip glitch. Arguably one of the most difficult and broken speedrunning techniques to have existed, allowing players to complete the entire game in six minutes. It's effectively an instant teleport. It is achieved by aligning certain animations through very precise inputs. Games have a frame rate measured in frames per second. Zips are a frame perfect, hardware dependent glitch that requires a stable 60 frames per second. The glitch is performed by inputting a slow walk command 132 frames after blocking. The walk input needs to be pressed for just 6 to 7 frames in order for the glitch to work, coming to a total of 139 frames. The theory as to why this works is that certain values are passed on to the next cycle of the idle block animation, but as we don't have access to the game's code, no one can be sure. By syncing up your inputs to specific beats on a metronome, you have the best chance of performing a zip. The best videos explaining the history and function of this technique are from a channel called Darave. Remember that you need to be frame perfect, there's no margin for error, which is why this doesn't work on consoles and you really need a keyboard and mouse for these inputs. I tried it offline to improve performance, I lowered my quality settings as low as it could go, optimised steam settings, that's literally why my footage is such bad quality. I started out so optimistically, I really thought I'd be one of the lucky ones. I have attempted to zip for close to four hours. Yes, I'm actually serious. Over the course of three days, I just sat here after lunch listening to a metronome and making the same three inputs. So yeah, it turns out I didn't clickbait. This genuinely was impossible for me. While making this video, I did learn one other thing, which I'll add in here. This one's nice, not game breaking. It's not absurdly complicated and it won't change the lands between, but it's definitely an advantage to know about. While standing upright, if you drink a flask of Crimson Tears and then drink a flask of Cerulean Tears, then you'll find you're forced to drink one, finish the animation, and then start drinking the next one. However, did you know that if you crouch this restriction is bypassed and you can drink both types of flask almost instantly, you skip the normal full animation. So yeah, for magic builds, this will genuinely save you time and will be a cool trick you can use in certain situations. So to conclude, it's not like I'm a speedrunner, and I haven't done most of these techniques in a true PvP setting yet, but at the end of the day, it just feels good doing cool, novel things in this game. Now I can hopefully join in more conversations about these advanced gameplay topics since I have some experience. I can be a much more dynamic player in the future duels I have with more abilities and options available to me. And also it's very rewarding being able to achieve things you'd always seen people do, but didn't think they'd be possible for you.
uh, except Zips. All my homies hate Zips. <laughs>